Hello guys, welcome to Geology Concepts. In this video, I am going to discuss uh, the MSQ and NAD section of IIT JAM uh, Geology Question Paper 2022. Uh, you must have seen the solutions for the section A as it has already been posted. Let's see the section B first. And this is the first question, 31st. So, which of the following structures form in marine environment? The first option is uh, lateral accretionary surface. And as you can see here, that uh, these are the lateral accretionary surface and they form in a uh, fluvial environment. As you can see, it's a meandering river. Okay, so this is wrong. Next is hummocky cross stratification. And these form in a uh, storm weather environment. Okay, and you can see these these hummocks and swales in the structure and they belong to uh, marine environment. So this is also correct. Next is herringbone cross stratification. And uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, they, they form in a uh, tidal environment. Okay, and these, uh, as you can see that there are two directions of these cross beddings representing the two directions of the tidal waves so, and they also form in a marine environment so this is also correct the last is barkanoids and they form in a uh, aeolian environment you can see this is the wind direction and this is uh, these are these sinuous crested uh, dunes okay, so they form in a, a, a aeolian environment so this is also wrong so b and c are correct Next is uh, question 32. Identify the correct stratigraphic succession uh, ordered from oldest to youngest. Okay, so here we can see that, that there are uh, two uh, successions, uh, one of uh, <coughs> Kadapa supergroup and one of uh, Vindin supergroup. So as we can see here, this uh, Kadapa formation Papaghan is the oldest, then Chitra, Chitravati, Nalamalai and Kurnul. So Papaghani and Chitravati, Nalamalai and Kurnul, this is the correct option for this Kadapa supergroup from oldest to youngest. Uh, the next is you can see uh, that uh, Vindian supergroup, we have Sembri group, the oldest, then Kaimur, Reva and Bhandir group. Okay, so we can see here uh, this Sembri, Kaimur and Reva and Bhandir. So, this is correct. So B and C are correct for this question. The next is uh, question number 33. Uh, which of the following stratigraphic units contain coal seams? Uh, so we can see here these for uh, these names of the formation. And uh, from the Gondwana supergroup, we can see that uh, there's Barakar, Panchet and Pachmari formations from here. And Lakadong formation belongs to another uh, group. So here we, uh, in the, from the options we can see that only Barakar here contains the coal seam and neither Pach, uh, Panchet and Pachmari contains any coal. Okay, so, <coughs> and uh, the next is uh, Lakadung formation. So it's from Jayantia group and here we can see that, uh, that uh, Lakadung sandstone, uh, they contain the, these coal seams. Okay, so the correct option the correct answer would be Barakar formation and Lakadong formation. So A and B are correct for this one. The next question is uh, which of the following genera are stem fossils? So you can see here that uh, these here are some plant fossils given. Uh, so if you see this chart, uh, you can see that uh, these are the plant fossils and uh, like the flora in the uh, lower Gondwana. So you can see there are various forms of these fossils like stem fossil, leaf fossil, okay, seed fossil, shoot fossil, fructifications. Uh, so let's find out the names as didaxilon you can see that it's a stem fossil and here we can see vertebraria that is a stem fossil. So these two are absolutely right. Okay, A and C and uh, if you see uh, dichrodium and uh, telophylum, we see telophylum here, okay, in the upper Gondwana. So it's uh, the form is leaf, and uh, the dichrodium also, it's the form is leaf. So these options must be wrong. So A and C are the correct options. 
Next is uh, which of the following statements are correct? So we can all see all these options. And if you look here, uh, first option says uh, abutments are the sides of the valley supporting the dam structure. Okay, so this is a dam in this uh, in this figure you can see, and these are the abutment contacts. Okay, so this is the uh, they are the contacts where the va valley is supporting this dam. Okay, so these this is a correct answer. Next is spillways can control the release of water from the reservoir. Okay, and we can uh, in this diagram we can see that these this is the spillway. Okay, and this is the maximum water level. And if the water level rises uh, above it, I mean uh, these these uh, spillways can uh, can allow the water to uh, flow out. Okay, so they control the release of water. It's a right option. Then C. Uh, the toe of the dam is the upstream edge of the base of the dam structure okay so this uh, this is the downstream side okay this is the upstream side okay uh, the river is flowing from here to here and this is the toe you can see towards the downstream side okay and at the upstream side you can see that the base of this uh, dam is called the heel so uh, as you can see in the option it's written upstream edge okay that that is the toe but it's not the toe it's the heel okay so this is the wrong option uh, the last is galleries serve as passages through the dam so it's also a correct option these are the galleries and it's a passage uh, inside the dam uh, and through the dam for different purposes so it's a correct option so a b and d for this one Uh, next question is uh, question 37 the acceleration due to gravity on the earth's surface depends on uh, so we can see that the force uh, gravitational force has this formula and the acceleration due to gravity has the formula this one and this is the mass of the earth and this is the distance between the body and the uh, center of the earth okay so if we uh, consider the first option that is latitude uh, we know that uh, if you move along a latitude like from the equator to the uh, pole the radius of the earth decreases okay and if this radius uh, decreases the gravity value will increase and definitely it will affect the gravity value so latitude is the correct option and next is longitude and uh, longitude if you consider you will move along uh, like if you are at the equator you will move along the equator if you are at uh, the tropics you will move along the tropics so there is no uh, change in the radius of the earth so this is a wrong option it will not affect the gravity value next is elevation and uh, you know that uh, it is uh, the gravity value is affected by r so uh, if the elevation is high uh, your r value will increase and your gravity value will decrease and therefore it will affect so this is the correct option and the last is topography of the surrounding terrain so for this if you uh, suppose uh, if you are standing uh, like uh, besides a, a big mountain and you are uh, somewhere here and measuring the gravity uh, so there would be a, uh, a gravity uh, force that would uh, that would be acting just uh, towards the center of the earth okay but there would be a gravitational force that would be uh, acting from the this this uh, mass of the mountain that is besides you okay so there would be some uh, force through which you would be attracted towards the mountain and there would be a vertical component for this uh, force and therefore the total force would be decreased okay and this will decrease the gravity value at this point so this is also a correct option so a d a c and d are correct for this one Question thirty-eight: uh, A metamorphosed basaltic assemblage can include the minerals. Okay, so if we uh, consider the assemblages of a uh, of a mafic rock, okay, so because basalt is a mafic rock, uh, we can see that uh, uh, garnet and amphisite uh, are here in the in this echolite facies. Hornblende and plagioclase, if we consider, we find this assemblage in amphibolite facies. Okay. and then garnet and storolite uh, we are not able to find anywhere so this 
uh, is a wrong option okay this is right this is right and glaucophenin losonide uh, we can see here in the blue schist faces we have a glaucophenin losonide okay so this is also correct option and uh, therefore a b and d are correct next is uh, which of the following pairs represent correct plutonic and volcanic equivalence so uh, granite diorite it's decide it's uh, correct then b it's norite and basalt so uh, the plut plutonic equivalent of basalt is gabbro so this is correct uh, this is wrong and then dunite and cometite so cometite we know that the plutonic equivalent is peridotite so this is also wrong then d option is correct so nephelinite uh, nepheline cyanide and phonolite is the correct option so a and d are correct so question number 40 uh, the last question of uh, msq section uh, based on the given stereographic projection the fold can be classified as okay so we can uh, this is a fold given uh, in the projection and this is limb 1 limb 2 and angle plane so limb uh, both the limbs are dipping in the same direction you can see here okay uh, and axial plane is also dipping in the same direction okay the dip angle is somewhere in between limb 1 and limb 2 and where the limb 1 and limb 2 li like both the limbs intersect that is the uh, fold axis okay so this is uh, the morphology of this fold so now we need to see which option is correct okay so first of all recline fold recline fold we know that the fold axis should have a pitch of around uh, 80 to 90 degree on the axial plane okay so this fold axis should have been plotted here okay so as it is in the periphery that means the fold axis is horizontal and uh, this option cannot be correct next is vertical fold in case of vertical fold the limbs both the limbs of the fold are vertical as well as the axial plane is vertical uh, even the fold axis is also vertical okay so nothing is vertical here so it's wrong next is overturned fold the overturned fold is uh, simply when both the limbs of the fold are dipping in the same direction okay and this is the case here we can see so this is correct both the limbs are dipping in the same direction it's a overturned fold and the next is a non plunging fold non plunging fold means that the fold axis should be horizontal and in this case fold, fold axis is horizontal and therefore uh, d is also correct now we uh, come to section c question number 41 the ripple symmetry index for the given hypothetical asymmetric ripple is we can round off to one decimal place so so as you can see here that uh, ripple symmetry index rsi is the length of the stoss side and length of the lee side okay and there is one thing called ripple form index that is uh, the wavelength upon height so i mean we don't have to confuse with this one so <coughs> as the flow direction is uh, towards the left this must be the stoss side okay and this is the lee side so rsi would be uh, 10 upon 4 and that would be 2.5 next question is within a fourth order drainage basin the total lengths of first second third fourth order streams are these respectively uh, if the drainage uh, density of the basin is 0 0.5 per kilometer the basin area is okay so b basically we have to calculate the basin area so as you can see here that the drainage density is equal to the average length of the channels you can see the total length of the channels divided by the area of the drainage basin okay so we have to calculate this and drainage density is also given so area of the density uh, area of the drainage basin would be equal to the length of the channels of this uh, uh, the length of the uh, channels in that uh, basin and uh, up divided by the drainage density okay so if you add all these uh, the total length would be uh, would come out to be 25 uh, kilometers okay and uh, the drainage density is 0 0.5 so we we have to divide it it comes out to be 50 kilometers square 
नेक्स्ट इज अ सॉइल इज अ वर्ड रेशियो ऑफ जीरो पॉइंट फाइव द टोटल पोरोसिटी ऑफ द सॉइल इज सो द वर्ड रेशियो इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉइड्स टू द टोटल टू द वॉल्यूम ऑफ द सॉलिड एंड द रिलेशन विद द पोरोसिटी इज इज दिस ओके सो पोरोसिटी इज इक्वल्स टू वर्ड रेशियो अपॉन वर्ड रेशियो प्लस वन सो वर्ड रेशियो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव सो इट्स जीरो पॉइंट फाइव प्लस वन ओके सो इट्स जीरो पॉइंट फाइव बाय वन पॉइंट फाइव इट कम्स आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट थ्री थ्री ओके एंड यू डोंट हैव टू आंसर इन परसेंटेज सो जस्ट राइट दिस वैल्यू नेक्स्ट इज द एवरेज यूनिट वेट ऑफ द अपर मोस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द क्रस्ट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड न्यूटन पर मीटर क्यूब द वर्टिकल स्ट्रेस एट अ डेप्थ ऑफ वन किलोमीटर वुड बी डैश मेगा पासकल्स सो स्ट्रेस इज बेसिकली फोर्स पर यूनिट एरिया ओके सो यू जस्ट हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई द टू टर्म्स ओके एंड इट्स वन किलोमीटर यू हैव टू कन्वर्ट इट इन मीटर्स फॉर द यूनिट सो इट्स थाउजेंड ओके सो इट्स ट्वेंटी फाइव इंटू टेन टू द पार सिक्स न्यूटन पर मीटर स्क्वायर ओके एंड दिस इज दिस इज दिस इज पासकल ओके एंड यू हैव टू राइट द आंसर इन मेगा पासकल सो यू विल डिवाइडेड बाय टेन टू द पार सिक्स विच विल बी ट्वेंटी फाइव द रेडियस ऑफ द अर्थ्स सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट अराउंड द सन इज दिस मच किलोमीटर्स द अर्थ टेक्स थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज टू ऑर्बिट द सन टेंजेंशियल वेलोसिटी ऑफ द अर्थ इज इन किलोमीटर्स पर आर सो द टेंजेंशियल वेलोसिटी हैज़ द फॉर्मूला ऑफ दिस लाइक ओमेगा आर ओमेगा इज एंगुलर वेलासिटी एंड ओमेगा इज थीटा बाय टी ओके सो इफ द अर्थ ऑर्बिट्स लाइक दिस इन अ सर्कुलर पाथ सो टू पाई वुड बी द एंगल दैट वुड बी कवर्ड in the complete uh, revolution and so vt would be 2 pi by t into r okay so it's basically the circumference by the time so it will be uh, vt will be equals to Two into three point one four into one forty nine put into the power six divided by three sixty five, and we have to convert it into hours. So we will multiply by twenty four, and this will come out to be one zero six eight one seven point three five. Okay, and you have to write for one decimal place. So write just three. Next is a bore hole inclined at sixty degrees to the horizontal pierces a vertical basaltic dike of uniform thickness. If the length of the basaltic drill core along the core core axis is twelve meters, the thickness of the dike is. Okay, so. basically the figure is like this okay so this is the bore hole at 60 degrees okay and uh, it pierces the vertical dike like this okay and the thickness of the dike would be like this because it's a vertical dike so we have the zoom version here so we have to calculate the true thickness so it would be cos 60 equals to Uh, true thickness upon twelve. Okay, so true thickness will be equals to zero point five into twelve, which is six meters. Next is a P wave arrives at the mantle core boundary at an angle of twenty five degree with respect to the normal. Uh, at what angle to the normal does it enter the core? Okay, and P wave velocity. In lower mantle and outer core is given. So this is basically the Snell's law, 
and uh, from this relation we can see that uh, more the angle more is the velocity and lesser the angle lesser is the velocity because this is, is a denser medium the core so it will be uh, sine 25 upon sine theta 2 will be equals to 13.7 upon 8.1 Okay, so theta 2 will come out to be if you solve then it would be 14.47 degrees okay so this is the answer next question is uh, the mass of the earth is 80 times that of the moon while the radius of the earth is four times that of the moon the surface gravity of the earth is dash times that of the moon so we have the same formula again and uh, we have to take out the ratio here okay so uh, gm by r square for earth divided by gm by r square for uh, moon okay okay so g will be cancelled out okay so suppose we take the earth mass as 80 and moon as uh, 1 okay so it would be 80 times and uh, radius as 4 times so uh, we will take the earth radius as 4 and moon as 1 so it would be 4 times so uh, 80 upon r square means 4 square that is 16 divided by uh, 1 upon uh, 1 square is 1 ok basically it comes out to be uh, 5 so is the right answer next is uh, a hypothetical rock contains the assemblage kyanite sillimanite and quartz the variance of the assemblage is so uh, for kyanite sillimanite and quartz we know that uh, kyanite and sillimanite have the same formula that is uh, al2 siu5 okay and quartz has siu2 so uh, we can I have two components here that is Al2O3 and uh, SiO2 okay uh, but we have three phases okay so three phases and uh, two components so the degree of freedom would be f equals to c minus p plus 2 and which would be uh, 2 minus 3 plus 2 which would be 1 so 1 is the right answer next question is uh, the cutoff grade of copper is 0.45 weight percent uh, a mine has 1 million ton of waste with a grade of 0.25 weight percent the mine has also has a stock of high grade ore with a grade of 1.8 weight percent how much of this high grade ore in million ton must be blended with the waste to sell the blended ore at a grade of 0.5 weight percent okay so what we have to do here is uh, blend this high grade ore with this uh, waste which has a grade of 0 0.25 and make a blended ore with a grade of 0 0.25 0 0.5 weight percent okay so uh, this uh, amount of high grade ore let it be uh, x okay so how much copper we would get from 0 0.25 weight percent would be 0 0.25 into uh, 1 million ton okay so actually we have to divide by 100 but it would eventually get cancelled out so this uh, plus uh, 1.8 uh, by 100 into uh, x okay so the amount used okay divided by the total uh, uh, total weight of the ore so it would be uh, this uh, 1 million ton plus this x okay and this would be equal to the grade that is the blended ore okay so 0 0.5 divided by 100 okay so so if you solve for uh, x uh, the value comes out to be 0 0.192 uh, million tons
now two marks questions uh, the maximum and minimum prin uh, principal stresses in a zone of active normal faulting are this and this respectively so like sigma 1 and sigma 2 sigma 3 uh, the fault plane strikes uh, this and dips 60 degree towards southeast considering anderson's theory of faulting the normal stress on the fault plane is uh, dash mega pascals so basically we have to apply this formula and the normal stress we have to calculate uh, with this formula okay so it would be uh, sigma n would be equals to uh, 28 plus 8 by 2 plus uh, 28 minus 8 by 2 into uh, cos theta here is 60 so it would be uh, cos 120 and uh, then it would be like 36 by 2 which is 18 and uh, uh, plus so this is multiplication so we will do it first and uh, so it would be uh, 20 by 2 which is 10 into uh, cos 120 has a value of uh, I think minus 0 0.5 okay so it would be uh, 18 minus uh, 5 that will be 13 so 13 is the answer the next question says uh, a granite block starts sliding on a slope uh, the inclination is 30 degree with the horizontal under the effect of gravity only okay and along the true direction of the inclination of the slope and hits the ground in four seconds so considering zero friction and zero cohesion during sliding the vertical height of the point with respect to the ground from where the block was dislodged is dash so we have here uh, this figure okay so this is the the granite block and uh, uh, this theta angle is uh, 30 degrees so basically the uh, the acceleration due to gravity uh, applied on this uh, this block would be just g sin theta okay and uh, this is the uh, force mg so we have to apply here the the conservation of energy and uh, it would be equal to the kinetic energy at this point would be equal to uh, the potential energy at this point so because it starts at this point and it was totally potential energy at this point and uh, when it reached at the bottom it was all all converted to kinetic energy so they will be same and uh, it would be half mv square will be equals to potential energy that is mg h and this is the vertical height that we're talking about here okay so it's a vertical height potential energy the height should be taken just the vertical height okay <coughs> and this g also would be uh, taken as the actual uh, value that is uh, 10 okay which is given here but if you see if, if you want to see the uh, acceleration due to gravity acting like the acceleration with uh, that is uh, achieved by this uh, granite block will be equals to g sin theta so how will we use that this, this that uh, we have an equation that is v equals to uh, u plus a t and uh, from here we will calculate the velocity at this point when it will reach this point so v will equals to uh, u means the initial velocity which is uh, zero and plus a would be g sine uh, theta and into t which is 4 seconds here ok so v would be equals to uh, g that is 10 sin theta sin 30 which is equal to 0 0.5 and into 4 so it would be uh, uh, 20 ok so 20 uh, meters per second is the velocity so we will put the values here m would be cancelled out so it is half into 20 into 20 equals to g that is 20 into h which we have to calculate so it's uh, 2 and it's h comes out to be 20 meters so this is the answer for this question 
cylindrical soil uh, sample is encased in in an open ended inclined tube with a diameter of uh, 100 mm there is a constant supply of water from the upper end of the sample and the outflow from the other end is collected in a beaker the average amount of water collected is uh, 1000 uh, mm cube every 10 seconds okay so the average average outflow velocity is dash so we have this uh, figure here so the water is uh, entering from the side and coming out from the side so this is the uh, discharge and discharge here is given that is uh, in the units of volume per uh, time and so it's 1000 uh, 1000 mm cube upon 10 seconds so it's a uh, 100 mm cube per second so this is the discharge here and uh, we have to calculate the outflow velocity okay so uh, if we see that the outflow velocity will be equals to the discharge upon the cross sectional area here okay so the cross sectional area is here is this okay so we know the diameter as uh, 100 mm so the radius would be uh, 50 mm and we have to calculate the area of cross section so it would be pi r square okay so pi value is given 3.14 into 50 into 50 7850 mm square so we would be 100 upon 7850 which will be equals to 0.013 so we have to write it for three decimal places so 0.013 is the answer Uh, using uh, aries hypothesis calculate the thickness of the root beneath a 4 km high mountain in isostatic equilibrium with a 40 km thick continental crust of density this much and mantle of uh, density this much okay so we have this figure and we have to calculate the thickness of this root uh, of the mountain that is 4 km thick Okay, and we have the continental crust, which is th has a thickness of forty kilometers. Okay, so this is R that we have to calculate. So we'll have. I mean, this should be the compensation uh, depth of compensation. So we'll have an equation like forty uh, kilometers. into uh, the density of the continent that is 2800 plus it will be r okay r into the density of the mantle so it would be r into 3300 which will be equal to uh, this whole thickness into the density of the continent so it would be uh, 4 plus 40 which is 44 plus x into 2800 and if you solve for x you will get a value of 22.4 kilometers so this is the answer given atomic uh, weights of copper iron and sulfur are this respectively and find out the weight of copper metal in an ore for 1 kg weight constituting bornite chalcopyrite and chalcosite okay present in weight fractions this so we have 1000 uh, uh, grams of uh, this ore and bornite constitutes 0.4 weight percent that is 400 grams chalcopyrite is 400 grams and uh, uh, chalcosite would be 200 grams okay so uh, we have uh, the formula for bornite chalcopyrite and uh, chalcosites you must uh, should know the formula for this otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to do the question so we have the atomic weight of bornite as 502 uh, 
chalcopyrite as this and chalcosite as this so in this our uh, like 502 grams of uh, bornite we have uh, 63.55 uh, the weight of copper into 5 uh, grams of copper okay so it would be uh, 317.75 okay so this much copper in this grams of these uh, this grams of um, bornite so if you want to have it in uh, 400 grams okay so this amount would be present in 400 grams this amount of copper okay so same we, uh, way we'll uh, do for this so it is uh, 63.55 in this okay because it is only one copper cu and for 400 grams it would be uh, uh, this value and uh, uh, this is a uh, 127.1 for this much grams so for 200 grams chalcoside is 200 so we'll have 159.67 so total amount of copper from this uh, uh, 1000 or you can say 1 kg of the ore will be 551.31 okay so this is the answer Next question is uh, an ore body defined by a 300 into 300 meter area is shown in the figure in which the drill holes location uh, on on equally spaced square grid are marked numbers 1 to 16 the average thickness of the ore body is at the four points are 10.8 and uh, at the four corners 11 meters at the remaining eight boundaries location in the is uh, is 10.5 meters respectively so the corresponding average grades are these so we have to calculate the average grade of the full ore body so these these four corners okay they have 11 meter thickness uh, the center points have uh, 10.8 meters and these points the remaining the edges are 10.5 meters so what we have to do is take out the average thickness of each and every block okay so the average thickness for this particular block would be the average of uh, 11 10.5 okay this is also 10.5 and 8 10.8 so here's a table where uh, i have calculated the average thickness for each and every block Okay, and uh, the next step is to calculate the total volume of the blocks. Okay, so the volume of blocks at the corners having 10.7 meter thickness. Okay, these are four blocks. Uh, so it would be like uh, these are the four blocks. Okay, having 10.7 meter thickness is the total volume is this. For 10.65, there are four blocks. Okay, this, 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 and the upper one. Uh, it will have the volume of this. These are also four blocks. One block of thickness 10.8 meter, that is the center block, will have a volume of this. Okay. Uh, the next step would be uh, to calculate the total weight of the copper from that block, from those blocks. Okay. So from 1.8 meter block, we have uh, the average grade as 1.5. okay and into uh, into the uh, this volume will give you the weight of this copper from this block okay then the then the blocks uh, of 10.7 meter thickness okay these are the four blocks the average grade would be 1.75 okay so this is because uh, uh, at each and every point the grades are different okay so we have to take the average of the grades also so like this uh, this is 1.9 uh, this point is 1.9 grade 1.5 and this is 1.8 and 1.8 so the average grade would be 1.75 and that would come out to be 7490 kg for these four blocks and 10.65 meter thick blocks will have the average grade as this and the copper as this 
द टोटल कॉपर ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम द होल ऑल द ब्लॉक्स वुड बी दिस एंड देर फोर द एवरेज ग्रेड ऑफ द फुल ओवर बॉडी वुड बी द टोटल कॉपर दैट वी हैव ऑप्टेन्ड इज दिस डिवाइडेड बाय द टोटल वॉल्यूम दैट इज दिस नाइन सिक्स टू ट्रिपल ज़ीरो नाइन नाइन सिक्स टू ट्रिपल ज़ीरो मीटर क्यूब एंड दिस इज के जी सो दिस इज द ग्रेड द वैल्यू वुड बी कम आउट टू बी जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन सिक्स सेवन वन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन सेवन so uh, in weight percentage it would be multiplied by 100 so it's uh, 1.67 so round off to 8 okay so it's 1.68 weight percent the 57 question is uh, uh, the 87 sr by 86 sr ratio of a 1000 million years granite was measured to be this if it's 87 rb by 86 sr ratio is this what was the sr isotropic ratio uh, of the source at the time of derivation of the granite so means the formation at the time of formation so the dk constant is given as this uh, so <coughs> so basically we are looking at this uh, formula and uh, this is the isochrone method uh, of dating and we'll use this formula so this is the ratio at a particular moment uh, that is given here that is uh, 0.8001 and this ratio that is a not at this sign is the ratio at the time of uh, the formation of the granite so this is what we have to find this ratio and uh, we know this ratio that is given that is 2.4 uh, 2.499 and This. so basically this is the this is the equation of a straight line so we'll uh, put the values as uh, 0.8001 equals to like we'll take this ratio as x okay for simplicity and then it's 2.499 into uh, it's uh, e to the power lambda that is 1.39 into 10 to the power minus 11 uh, into time that is thousand million years and so we have to convert it into millions i mean uh, only years so it would be the 10 to the power 6 plus thousand then uh, that is 10 to the power 9 years okay and minus 1 so this will come out to be the value of x uh would be 0.765 okay three decimal places so this is the answer okay so this x is basically this uh, this ratio okay this ratio at the uh, time of formation of the granite and that is this this one the next question is uh, the coefficient of permeabilities of uh, the two aquifers is given okay aquifer 1 and 2 is this and this respectively and their saturated thickness is 30 meters and 15 meters okay so assuming steady state darsen flow the transmissivity of the aquifer 1 is dash times that of aquifer 2 okay uh, so aquifer uh, like uh, the transmissivity the formula is uh, hydraulic conductivity into the satur saturated uh, thickness so the transmissivity for the aquifer 1 would be uh, 60 into uh, 30 and for t2 aquifer 2 will be uh, 40 into 15 okay so it will be just uh, division of the ratio of these two so it would be 3 so the answer would be Assume that uh, 218 polonium with a half life of 138 days 
is in secular equilibrium with the uranium 238 whose half life is this much so how many grams of uh, polonium 218 will be present for each grams of uranium 238 in the mineral okay so uh, you can see that uh, the half life uh, this uh, sorry the decay constant of uranium is very very high uh, compared to uh, polonium okay so in that situation there can be secular equilibrium achieved that is mentioned in the question and for that case we apply this equation uh, so it's uh, in place of uh, the static constant i can write down uh, ln by t half okay t half of uh, po of polonium okay equals to uh, lambda 2 that is ln by uh, t half of uh, uranium uh into oh sorry n1 and n2 okay so uh, we have to calculate the we have to know the ratio for n1 is to n2 okay so uh, this gets gets cancelled out so it's basically the half life half life of polonium upon half life of uranium that is 4.5 and 10 to the power 9 years so i'll convert it into days so into 365 okay so uh, we have to express the answers and answer in a logarithm uh, so and base 10 so we'll take the uh, log of this value okay and it comes out to be uh, minus 10.0 seven up to uh, two decimal places okay so this is the answer for this question and the last question the figure below is an uh, isobaric uh, binary temperature composition plot what amount in percentage of the equilibrium melting of rock r will generate a melt of composition l okay so it's uh, basically asking that uh, if this r okay having bulk composition as this uh, a 90 and uh, b 10 okay so if this composition of rock is melting and when the liquid composition reaches here how much melt has been created so at a particular uh, temperature the amount of melt and solid can be calculated by the lever rule so we can construct a tie line here okay and this can connect by this this r which acts at the uh, acts as the fulcrum so this distance is 10% and this complete distance is uh, 35 so this is the amount of liquid here this 10 so it would be Simply ten by thirty-five into two hundred. Okay. So this will be uh, equal to twenty-eight point five seven. Okay, and uh, percent, and we have to write it in one decimal place, so it it would be twenty-eight point six percent. This is the answer for this question. So that was all. and i hope you all did well all the questions here were discussed very briefly uh, obviously due to the uh, time constraint uh, so if you have any doubts you can ask us in the comments and all the very best for your results bye bye